Hi, this is uh, Dave from uh, VideoFXUniverse.com and today's tutorial is in 3D Studio Max where I'll be showing you how to create a glass material. Now there are m quite a few different ways to create glass um, using materials and they all have different levels of uh, detail. Some look realistic and others don't. Um, I'm just going to show you three different ways on how to um, accomplish creating glass using the material editor. Okay, So first off I'm just going to um, hide two of these glasses because we don't need these and we're just going to concentrate on the center one so press M to bring up your material editor go to your first slot and we're going to choose a kind of blue color for the first um, attempt and uh, bring up the uh, specular level uh, bring up the glossiness uh, click on two sided and bring the opacity down to about five okay so it's fairly see through now apply it and we're going to do a little test render and see what we come back with now as you can see from that it doesn't look very detailed at, at all it's very very hard to actually see the glass um, it, as you can see it just looks like a, a kind of shadow on the table anything that really gives it away is obviously the main shadow here and this very dark spot at the base of the glass so it's obviously not probably the best technique to use for this I'm just going to hide this one and unhide glass 2 and we're going to go into our material editor again and we're going to start with um, something new so go into maps your reflection and go down to ray trace ok um, set it to about I'd say about 30 ok set your diffuse to complete black bring your specular level right up and make sure that your glossiness is quite high as well try and get it so that the uh, the dots on here are very very small now what you don't want to do here is click on two sided um, this, this does work with flat um, objects like a uh, windows and things like that but with complicated objects such as this will absolutely murder your render times okay so, right opacity bring it down to five and select and we're going to do another render and see what we come back with again and there we go as you can see it's a little bit more detailed but it still doesn't look perfect um, in some um, instances this will work quite well uh, don't be surprised by this actual test render here um, with ray trace it's always good to have a background picture because uh, the reflections work so much better when it's got something to reflect if you've just got a completely black scene with um, uh, an object that's got a um, ray trace applied it won't really um, show off very very well at all now like I said uh, for this instance it doesn't look too good but it will work in quite a lot of other things so do not shy away from the ray trace option because it is still a very very good way to create um, a glass object um, but what we're going to do now is go for the final one which is the best one and if we just hide this unhide by name and glass free right let's center this one and you are going to be blown away by this next one because this one is so realistic so we're going to go to our material editor go on to our next slot and here you have the stand button click on it and select ray trace now it's not the same as uh, the one in the map in the reflection this is actually a material um, that's, that's made completely different so as you can see now we've already got a bit of a difference right okay wh what you want to do first is change your shading from fong to blin uncheck your luminosity and your transparency uncheck so uncheck your reflect button here and change your specular level to around about 250 your glossiness to around about 75 okay um, open up your maps and in reflect open this up and select fall off okay right go down to this and add a point around about here okay now you want to click on this and drag it down to around about there come out select uh, your super sampling here um, unselect the global and use this one here which is uh, enabled local super sampler let's move up and see where we are right transparency needs to be at 100 okay and now what we're going to do is apply it so 
hopefully you um, followed along with that. You have to mess around a little bit with it to, to get it right, but um, as long as um, obviously you've got got most of the um, the right settings here, like specular level 250 glossiness, um, and obviously your uh, your fall off settings done right, then this should actually work. Right, okay, we're now going to do a final render and see what we come back with. And there you have it. How good does that look? Um, if I just open this up and zoom right in, you've got more, more detail there. Now, how realistic is that? You know, you've got the, uh, the edges around the rim of the glass, which you would normally have in real life. You've got the distortion in the background that you can see through the cup, uh, through the glass, sorry. Uh, you've got reflective edges, you've got double reflective edges of the bottom of the glass and that actually looks like it's a real glass um, cup and uh, that's how you do it. Now obviously the, uh, the the shadow kind of gives it away here that it's not entirely transparent but that's because of obviously the, um, the light settings. Now if I change my light uh, from shadow map into advanced ray traced make sure your shadows are on and in optimizations click on transparent shadows this means that light will pass through the glass and reflect onto the surface so I'm now going to do a re-render and I'm actually going to um, make it a little bit bigger so you've got much more of a clearer view of the glass so actually I'll just stick to uh, 800 by 600 because that's a lot better so we're going to render that and see what we come back with now and there you go as you can see now that I've added the um, the transparency to the shadows we now have a more transparent shadow on the table here um, and there's more transparency transparency sorry through the bottom of this glass so you can even see the table through the actual glass so by uh, selecting um, advanced ray trace in your optimizations and making the transparent shadows you now even have a proper reflective see-through shadow that casts onto an object uh, from this so that's basically um, how realistic this can look um, and this is all done with a standard render um, no V-Ray or anything like that um, and it also works the same if you added liquid into the glass as well um, so if I was to, I don't know, very very quickly um, cylinder, let's just add a cylinder into it uh, it's not going to be very very detailed here but I'm just going to add it for the sake of the tutorial All right. this is probably not going to work too well because I'm just rushing this uh, it needs to be inside okay uh, Let's bring this up a bit so it's not going through the table. It's probably not going to work too well because I, I, I'm just rushing this just for the future tutorial and I'm not scaling into the actual object here. Uh, material editor, um, let's just go into another one, standard ray trace. Okay, uh, reflect, da -da -da. 90 for this. Uh, Blin 150 and 80. Uh, that'll do. Um, diffuse. I'm going to change this to red. Okay, and this to red as well. Uh, that's so a little bit better. Uh, apply that, and we're just going to do one final render and see what this comes back with now. And there you have it. There you go. So it even works on um, liquid uh, materials as well, as long as they're stationary. And as you can see, it doesn't completely fill the glass because, as I said, I just rushed it um, just to fit inside it. But you can see all the details here of the uh, reflection of the wood. Uh, you can see the distortion on the wood as it reflects this side here. And also the shadow now is uh, still not a completely blank um, dark shadow, but it's still also reflective as well. So that, my friends, is basically the tutorial. So thank you very much much for watching and um, I will speak to you all soon. Visit the website at video-fx-universe.com and uh, I shall speak to you later.
Bye.